moving, shifting masses of people, streets full of hurrying people, walking and riding, always on the move. This is the rhythm of America, the pulse beat stirring in our cities. And for every city, this is its life stream. Workers hurrying each day to their appointed tasks in mill and factory. Businessmen and women going to their offices. The telephone operator arriving breathlessly at her switchboard. Clerks in stores meeting the constantly changing wants of their customers. A housewife window shopping. Trying on a pretty new hat in the millinery shop. Picking up a yard or two of dress goods. Or dropping in with the girls for a soda. Life stream. Human beings moving in their many orbits within the city. Congregations assembling for worship in the churches of their choice. Kids in school intent on study or dreaming of long summer vacations. Walking the campus between classes. People want to go to and from the playgrounds. To and from the fairways and greens. To the tennis courts. To theaters. And to ballparks. And then they must be moved home again. Yes, this intricate flow of traffic, this purposeful movement of people is the life stream of the city. And it must flow smoothly and swiftly, for it is vital to the city's prosperity and progress. But the life stream must flow on city streets. And because the city has not planned effectively for this flow, has not used its streets efficiently, the life stream is slowing down. The city was once a little town. Its industries were small, unhurried and simple. Its stores and shops modest and homey. The pace of the life stream was slow and easy and only a small area made the little town the center of its activity. But now the little town has grown up and from a greatly enlarged surrounding area Huge numbers of people have turned the life stream into a flood. Yes, the little town has changed. Changed into a vast, crowded panorama of concrete and steel. Its industries have become giants. Its stores and shops have multiplied and pushed their roofs into the sky. But its streets have not changed. The streets of the little town and the streets of the city are largely the same. Yet through them tries to flow the greater life stream. Funneled, bottlenecked and jammed, its very volume is crowding and clogging and choking it to a stop. Elaborate freeways and overpasses have been built in efforts to ease the traffic situation. But these generally are on the outskirts of the city, while the problem is within the city where property values are tremendous and there is no space for freeways, where the streets already exist, but where parked cars reduce their width. Traffic rules and regulations have been imposed, but the rules and regulations deal with effect rather than cause. The problem lies deeper than mere rules. If our cities are to continue to grow, to become better and more desirable places in which to work and live, the life streams in these cities must be speeded up. We must start to plan now. And to plan for the future, we must solve the traffic problems of today. These problems lie in the means by which people move. We must find a better way of moving people. City planning commissions emphasize that 
Well-rounded community life depends upon transportation. The basic function of transportation is not moving vehicles, but moving people. Moving them on streets, already built and paved and limited in width and location. The automobile, of course, must be considered in any city transportation plan. The automobile has greatly increased our individuality of movement. But at the same time, through sheer number, it has become the most serious factor in our city traffic situation. City planners have found that in the city, one and three quarters is the average number of passengers per automobile. To carry 50 seated persons, it would require 29 automobiles. These automobiles would fill a full city block, yet these 50 people could all ride in one public transit vehicle, which takes little street space. Each person in a moving automobile uses 500 square feet of street space, but needs only 70 square feet of street space while riding in a public transit vehicle. One street with three lanes of automobiles can move only 3,700 people per hour. The same street, with two lanes of automobiles and one lane for surface cars, can move 15,630 people per hour. This great increase is possible because 86% of these people will be carried by the public transit vehicle. One automobile requires 240 square feet of parking space, but each passenger needs only 150 square feet of office space for his work since the average load per automobile is one and three quarters persons, 140 square feet of parking space is needed for each passenger. So if all the workers in any office building came to work in automobiles, the parking space required would just about double the size of the building or require another building of equal size. Therefore, it is obvious that city transportation must be built upon an efficient public transit system. An efficient transit system must be planned according to the number of passengers that must be carried per hour past a given point. The type of vehicle to be used, rapid transit train, surface car, trolley coach, or bus, depends upon the needs of the area to be served. In the very largest cities, rapid transit cars carry the heaviest loads. One subway line can carry 100,000 passengers per hour in each direction on two tracks. To carry the same load in automobiles would crowd to capacity 20 four-lane elevated highways, which would be a half mile wide and whose cost would be astronomical. In these largest cities, rapid transit trains should bear the main burden of city travel and should constitute the backbone of the public transit system. The rapid transit train moves the residents of suburban and outlying districts to and from the downtown area. It brings these people closer to the heart of the city from the standpoint of time and makes the central districts more accessible to a greater number of people. An automobile freeway is used for traffic from a suburb to a downtown area, the installation of a rapid transit line down the center of the freeway is relatively inexpensive and it can increase the capacity of the freeway nearly 10 times. In large or moderately large cities, modern streetcars seating at least 50 people per car can perform the sizable task of moving 13,500 people per hour to their destination. To carry the same load in automobiles on city streets would require nine traffic lanes.
This modern streetcar is the basic vehicle of the transit system in moderately large cities. It is fast and quiet. Its wide aisles and roominess permit easy loading and unloading. And passengers are carried smoothly and comfortably. For surface transit on regular streets, the modern streetcar is highly efficient for the heaviest loads. Fast pace keeps city traffic moving. It not only supplements rapid transit in the largest cities, but also can be used in trains to perform regular rapid transit service. For the great number of moderate sized cities and for many lines in large ones, the trolley coach or trackless trolley is the ideal heavy-duty transit vehicle. For such service, it has many advantages. The trolley coach, where lines converge, is capable of carrying up to 10,000 passengers per hour in one direction during rush hours. The trolley coach has many advantages. It starts and stops smoothly and rapidly and its wide doors speed up loading and unloading. It is thus enabled to maintain high schedule speeds. In addition, the great flexibility and maneuverability of the trolley coach makes it possible for the driver to keep moving ahead in congested traffic. It sprints up hills because of its unlimited electric power. The trolley coach is free from fumes. It is very quiet and therefore is welcomed in any zone. It may be routed without criticism through restricted school districts, past churches, and through the most attractive residential sections. It carries its passengers in comfort with wide aisles, liberal headroom, and plenty of well-distributed lighting. The trolley coach supplements both rapid transit and streetcars in the largest city transit systems, as well as serving the great majority of surface lines in cities of moderate size. Public opinion surveys in these cities show that people prefer the trolley coach to all other transit vehicles of similar size. It satisfies their desires for fast, smooth, comfortable, and quiet transportation. Although it is comparatively a newcomer in the field of transit, an increasing number of cities are planning their transit systems around it. Already the people in more than 50 cities in all parts of the country are enjoying the benefits of electric trolley coaches. In the smallest cities, motor buses can best serve the relatively light traffic needs more efficiently. They are also capable of performing a valuable service in supplementing rapid transit, modern streetcars, and trolley coaches in larger cities. The self-contained vehicle serves particularly well on feeder lines from outlying suburban districts. The basic problem in city planning, a problem which continually offers new challenges to forward-looking leaders, is that of moving people. 
moving people efficiently from their homes to their work, their business, stores, schools, church, and to play, and back to their homes again, back and forth, smoothly and efficiently, day after day. By teaming up with public transit, by encouraging the use of the proper vehicles as the backbone of your transportation system, your city can enhance the value of its real estate and overcome the barriers of distance and traffic congestion. Good public transit relieves traffic congestion because it uses street space most efficiently. Good public transit attracts new industries by providing fast economical transportation for their employees and builds local business by making stores, theaters, and restaurants more accessible. Your city's transportation must be planned to move not vehicles, but people. If it is built upon public transit and is planned to meet projected needs, as well as present ones, it is a strong foundation for things to come, whatever course their development may take in the city of the future.